Last Wednesday, we're, we were in chapter five. We did the first part of chapter five, worked an example problem, and now we'll continue on with chapter five, transient heat conduction, and we'll start radiation chapter 12 on Wednesday. Okay, so we, in chapter five, we said there's a very important dimensionless number called the BO number. Uh, its significance is that if it's less than a certain number, 0.1, we can use a very simple model to calculate how the temperatures of an object in conduction heat transfer vary with time. There's only really two equations. One gives you the temperature as a function of time, and the other one gives you the amount of energy transfer that occurred, Q, capital Q. Now, the other side of the coin is, if the BO number is greater than one-tenth, we no longer can use that very simple model, which is called the lumped heat capacity model, LHC. So that's today's topic. The first part, if the BO number is less than one-tenth, the temperature only depends on time, not of X. The temperature only depends on time, not of R. Now, BO number greater than one-tenth, now it depends on two variables, X and T or R and T. If we look only at a plane wall, and we described the plane wall last time, here's the plane wall, its thickness is 2L. We measure X from the center line, X equals zero. The thickness is two times L. There's a fluid blowing over the left and right hand sides at temperature T infinity. The convection coefficient on both sides is H. And the correct partial differential equation for this problem would be partial squared t with respect to x, one over alpha, partial t with respect to time. With the correct initial and boundary conditions, the solution would be pretty long, an infinite series. But we're going to look at only a one-term approximation to the infinite series. So because the infinite series is so long, we'll focus on a one-term approximation. So approximate solution is as follows. All right, so we take a look first of all at something called theta star. And theta star t minus t infinity divided by t initial minus t infinity. And that's really theta over theta i, theta being t minus t infinity. C1 exp minus zeta 1 squared Fourier cosine of zeta 1 x star zeta that's the one term approximation of the infinite series the first term approximation now there's two constants in there there's c1 and there's zeta 1. We're going to mention how you get those, but just looking ahead a bit, we're getting those constants from table 5-1. If it's a plain wall, like over there, BO number here, zeta 1, C1 here. That's how we get those constants. Now, uh, Fourier. Fourier number, alpha t over L squared. What's L again? Half the wall thickness. 
and x star equal x over L. So at the center line, x is 0, so x star is 0. At the right-hand wall, x is equal to L, so x star equal 1. So x star varies from 0 at the center line to either plus or minus L, plus or minus 1, pardon me, at the left or right-hand wall. That equation is written in a lot of dimensionless quantities. That's what we engineers love. That's why we do stuff like that. We love to make it dimensionless. 4EA is dimensionless. Theta star is dimensionless. X star is dimensionless. So, you give me a time. You say, I want to know the temperature at a time of 1,000 seconds. Okay, put it in here. Get the 4A number. Put it in here. Get zeta 1 and C1 from that table. Put them in here. Do what it says. I know T infinity typically. I know T initial typically. Solve for the temperature. Where? At that X value and that time. X and time. There. So that's how we solve for the temperature for t as a function of x and time. You give me x and time, and I'll tell you a temperature. Okay. Now, uh, for center temperature, at the center, x equals 0, so x star equals x over L equals zero. Cosine is zero is one. This cosine becomes one. So theta naught star equal t center minus t infinity, t initial minus t infinity, c1, minus zeta 1 Fourier, zeta 1 squared Fourier. And that's going to give me the center line temperature. Now, for the amount of energy transferred Q, capital Q, let's see if I got that down. Oh, yeah, okay. For the center line temperature, Q over Q naught, and I'll mention Q naught in just a minute. Q naught is how much energy is stored initially in the object with respect to the surrounding fluid temperature T infinity, T initial minus. It's the initial stored energy of the body. That's what Q naught is. Don't forget, Q, capital Q is in joules. Now, the equation numbers, just so if you want to check those in the book, the first one's f equation 543A. Yeah, 543A. I'll put it here. This one is equation 543B. And this one is equation 549. So you've got three equations. One gives you the temperature, I'll put this down, for the center temperature, T, where at x equals zero, 
for any time t. That's what that gives you. So you can find the temperature at the center line, equation 543b. You can find the temperature at any x value, equation 543a. Or you can find how much energy has been transferred from time zero to whatever time t by equation 554. For what kind of geometry? A plane wall. Three equations. OK, now. Let's take a look at an infinitely long cylinder. By that we mean if its length is a lot greater than its diameter. If you see a problem in homework or an exam that says, consider uh, a, very, a very long copper uh, wire. OK, that tells me I'm going to assume it's infinitely long. One eighth inch wire diameter, three feet long. Oh, oh yeah, that satisfies it. OK, here we go again. Three equations. The general equation, the temperature for any radius at any time t, the outside radius is R0. I'm not going to write the equations down, but I'm going to tell you um, what, they, uh, what numbers they are. So for that one, let's see if I've got that written down here somewhere. OK, that one, yeah, here we go. Uh, for t as a function of any radius in time, equation 552a. Uh, for t at the center line, any time t, five fifty two c. No, let's see, five fifty two c. Yeah. For the amount of energy transferred in a certain time interval, five fifty four. Now, the last of this, I'm going to describe three different geometries. A plain wall, a long cylinder, and a sphere. For the sphere, for the temperature as a function of radius and time, equation 553a. For the center of the sphere, Five fifty three C. Either textbook. For Q equation five fifty five. So these are the three geometries our textbook focuses on. How many total equations are you available to solve these guys? Three for plane walls, three for cylinders, three for spheres, nine. What that, what's that for? If the BO number is greater than one-tenth and you don't want to use lump T capacity, then you've got those nine choices. What if the BO number is less than one-tenth? Oh, life is easier. BO number less than one-tenth, there's only two equations. One gives you the temperature as a function of time. The other one gives you Q as a function of time. You don't see X in those equations. You don't see R in those equations. Life is easy. But now, when the BO number exceeds this, now you've got to go through much more complicated analysis. Okay. These are the first term approximations. You can only use these equations
approximate equations. If the Fourier number greater than or equal to 0 0.2. Here's a Fourier number right here, Fourier number. What if it's not? I mean, you can't use the one term approximation. You got to go back and throw in more terms in the infinite series. The one term approximation won't give you an accurate answer, or an approximate answer even. So, you can see in problems like this, you might have to check two dimensionless parameters, the BO number and the Fourier number. So that's two possibilities there, okay. What does that physically mean when we have this guy right here? Well, as an example, let me just sketch something that might help you visualize what's going on. We're going to cool a sphere with the lumped heat capacity model, what that gives us, and the approximate solution or the actual, we'll say, using the approximate solution. And we'll start out at uh, time equals zero, and we've got the sphere initially at a temperature of 100 degrees everywhere, 100 degrees, 100 degrees, 100 degrees, for both cases. And then we're going to just say, let's just say 60 seconds, just make something up. Now I'm going to blow air over this at a temperature of 20 degrees. Oh, this sphere might have cooled down now to 85 degrees. With the lump heat capacity model, it's 85 degrees everywhere. Actually, it might not be that way. The center might not have started to cool at all yet. It might still be at 100. The surface temperature might have cooled by a lot. It's down to 78. Inside somewhere, it might be 87. Now we go to 120 seconds. Lump T capacity model, oh, it's cooled down now. It's down to 60 degrees. Where? Everywhere. It's not a function of radius. It's only a function of time. The real world situation. Oh yeah, the outside's now cooled down to 50. The centers finally started to cool down. It's down to 90. Somewhere else the temperature might be 50. Uh, not 50, 70, pardon me. Lump T capacity, temperature is only a function of time. I don't care what the radius is. Actual, BO number greater than 0.2. Temperature now is a function of the radius and of time. So that is a little physical feeling for what does that mean when the BO number is less than or greater than a 0.1. The BO number is also a ratio of two resistances, the conduction resistance and the convection resistance. So it's a measure of two resistances, conduction and the convection. Okay, so back to here. Yeah, life is more complicated when the BO number is greater than 0.1. Um, in this textbook, you don't have to ever worry about this because he's not going to make you at end of chapter problems make you do an infinite series, you know, so don't worry about that. Um, although you should always check that just to make sure you're okay. I don't care if it's homework or an exam. When you're done, check that guy and see if that's true. But irregardless, in this case, if it's not true, you probably made a mistake because mostly all these problems in here satisfy that.
but just to check it so you know you've checked it. Okay, nine equations, one table, solving if the BO number greater than one tenth. By the way, can you use this stuff if the BO is less than one tenth? Oh, of course you can. It's the actual solution to the PDE, one term approximation. Sure you can, but why would you want to? If the BO number is less than one tenth, take the easy way out. How many equations are there? Two. You want to solve two equations or maybe nine equations? No, 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 do the two. If the BO number is less than one tenth, take the easy way out, lumped heat capacity. Although, the approximate solution works for any BO number. Okay. Lump heat capacity only works if the BO is less than one tenth. All right, so let's take an example problem and go through all this. We're going to take a long cylinder. All right, so let's erase this. Any questions on this before I erase some stuff? Okay. Diameter equal 20 centimeters. Okay. So, obviously looks like this. R is the general radius, anywhere from zero to R naught. R naught's the outside radius. Oh, by the way, the material of this guy is carbon steel. Uh, properties at, oh, okay, let me tell you what you're supposed to find first. <clears throat> find the time when the center line temperature is 800 degrees it's, there's air blowing over this at temperature T infinity. There's a convection coefficient H on the outside surface. T infinity is a hot gas temperature at 1200 degrees C. We start out with the long cylinder at initial temperature Ti of 300. Convection coefficient is 100. At what time does the centerline temperature get to 800? It started out at 300 in the middle, everywhere. Okay. Properties at, uh, I'm gonna take, it starts out at 300, and the center line gets to 800, so I'll take that average, 550 degrees C. Go to the back of the book, the table, fine carbon steel, got it. Get the density. Thermal conductivity. Specific heat. And thermal diffusivity. The properties you know from before, so they're the properties, of course, they're correct. Okay, so the BO number, HLC over K, for LC, LC for a plane wall is L, L sub C for a sphere, R not over three, L sub C for a long cylinder, R not over two. The BO number comes out to be zero point zero nine seven six. It's really close to zero point one. 
So I'm going to use the approximate solution. Now, legally, legally, I could say, okay, it's less than one tenth, so I can use lump T capacity. I know that's that's the rule for homework and exams, no matter what. If it's less than one tenth, go ahead and use lump T capacity. But the closer you get to one tenth, the more inaccurate that model becomes. So I'm just going to say, okay, we're really close to point one, so I'm going to go ahead and try to use the approximate solutions. <clears throat> okay. All right, now, what am I given? I'm given the center line temperature. Okay. I have three equations. Which equation is for the center line temperature? Okay, not a problem. I just set it right here. Equation 552C. So guess what I do? I say, you know what? I'm going to use equation 552C. Okay. So here's equation 552C. Uh, okay, let's see where we have that guy here. Oh, here we are. And I didn't write it down, so I'll write it down the board for you. Here we are, infinite cylinder, 552C. Theta naught star. Theta naught, what does the naught mean? Theta naught, center line temperature, R equals zero. T at R equals zero minus T infinity divided by T initial minus T infinity equals, okay, 552C, C1, EXP. Minus zeta one squared four EA. Okay, there it is. And so let's see what that gives us here then. Uh, T at R equals zero, center line temperature. Okay, 800. T infinity, 1200. T initial, 300. T infinity, 1200. Zero point four four four. Equal. Okay, uh, C1, I'm gonna put it right here. C1, 1.048. And that's at, what was our BO number? Point one. Mm hmm Yeah, okay. Times EXP minus zeta one zero point six one one squared four EA. Four EA comes out to be 2.30. But the Fourier is alpha T over R naught squared. Okay. All right, so let's see, we have here, we go down here to BO, 0 0.195. It's really close to 0.2. Go to the infinite cylinder, zeta 1, 0 0.611, 1.048. Yeah. Double check it, make sure it's okay. Yep, it's okay. Yeah, okay.
What's the BO number? Uh, BO number, 0.0976. What's the BO number? 0.195. Whoa, wait a minute now. There's two values. What's going on here? Why do I go to the table, 0.195, where the BO number should be, 0.098? Well, you gotta read the fine print in the contract. The fine print in the contract is usually at the end of all the fun stuff up front of the contract. Here's all the fun stuff. At the bottom of the page in fine print, you gotta read the fine print. It says, by the way, when you're using the cylinder, don't use R0 over 2 for BO number. Use R0, which means you double it. You double 0976 and you get 0.195. Boy, you better be careful on homework or exams. It's easy to make that mistake, I guarantee it. I've seen it on exams. People in a rush will make that mistake. You got a big yellow highlighter, highlight it. Does it make any difference for the plain wall? No, it doesn't make any difference. The BO number for a plain wall is HL over K. The BO number over here for a plain wall is HL over K. What's the BO number over here to check one-tenth for, for a sphere? R naught over three over here for a sphere. Don't put the three in there, it's just R naught. So be careful. There's reasons for that, but I'm not gonna go through all those great reasons it takes about 10 minutes to describe why they do that. Yes, sir? So the real number we used to check would be the actual one. Yes, that's right. The, what's the actual one? Uh, over two and over three. The R0 over two and the R0 over three. Yes, exactly. Only when you use that table there. Now, here's another thing, since you mentioned that too. The book says Fourier is alpha t over L, L squared. That's for a plain wall. For a, a long cylinder, it's R0. For a sphere, it's R naught. The only time you put that R naught over two and R naught over three is when you check the BO number there. That's it, okay. Okay, just a big red flag, you know, be careful, that's all. Okay, uh, now, solve for T. I, I know alpha, alpha, oh yeah, there's alpha. I know alpha, I know R naught, solve for T. T equal 1900 seconds. So after 1900 seconds, the center line temperature is 800. Now that's part A, did I put part A down? I didn't put part A down, it's okay, part A. Um, part B, find the surface temperature. at this time. Okay, so what's the surface temperature now after 1900 seconds? Okay, here's your decision. Um, what do I want? Surface temperature, where is that? R equal R naught. Uh, here, R equal R naught. I gotta put R naught in there. What equation do I use? Not a problem, 552A. Okay, here's 552A. Vessel function. Okay, vessel function. Number one, well, I want to solve for that guy. Temperature R equal R naught. What's this guy right here? Okay, this guy, theta naught star. Let's see, theta naught star. Okay. That should be a star, pardon me. Star always means divided a ratio. That's what the star means. Okay, there it is. There it is. There it is. He goes in there. They don't, I've already found it. 
theta naught star. Okay, got to go here and find this guy. Okay. That is in uh, the table from the table back of the book, 0.91. So, solve to get, oh, by the way, r star equal r over r not equal r not over r not equal 1. So, r star is 1 at the surface of the cylinder. So I go to the table. Here's what the table gives you. That's what it says. That's exactly what the table says, x. You got to figure out what x is. x is zeta 1 r star. x is zeta 1 r star. OK. Now put that in there and solve to get what? Solve for the temperature at the surface. Uh, 836 degrees C. So after 1,900 seconds, the temperature of the surface of that is 836 degrees C. Okay, C. How much energy has been transferred to the cylinder from the hot gases. Okay, that's the question. Okay, back to our three equations. Only have three equations. If B O number is greater than one-tenth, there are three equations you can use to solve for things. Center temperature, off-center temperature, Q. I'm going to solve for Q, energy. Okay, equation 554. All right, so 554. It's a ratio. Q over Q naught. That's that equation, 554. Theta naught star, here it is. Put it in there, 0.444. 2 times 0.444 divided by zeta 1, 0.611. Yeah. J1 of zeta 1, go here, 2.611. Get J naught, get J1. That's how you do it. OK, now this guy here, <laughs> see there's there's a theta knot, and there's a Q knot. Okay, now I'll get Q knot. So my Q knot is rho C V T initial minus T infinity. That's like mass times C times the temperature change. That's like stored energy. So what Q naught is, it's like the amount of stored energy in the body 
at the start of the process relative to the T infinity outside temperature, relative to the outside temperature. How much energy is stored relative to the outside temperature of the body? Now, what's, what's the volume? Okay, this is a, a long cylinder, rho, C, V, circumference pi times D times the length, T infinity, my, uh, T infinity, yeah, right, uh, T initial minus T infinity. Do I know the length? No, the problem said a very long cylinder. I don't know L. You know the game we play. If you don't know L, you divide by L. You make it prime quantity. The L cancels out. And now you've got to put primes on everything. Okay, I'm not going to find Q in joules. No, I want to find Q prime, which is joules per meter. And this is Q naught prime. So there's the right equation I'm going to use. Q prime divided by Q naught prime equal 1 minus dot dot dot. Oh, and then, okay, um, did I get that number? Let's see if I got that number. Yeah, I did. 2.4 times 10 to the ninth. Okay, 2.4 times 10 to the ninth joules per meter. And then I put that, uh, now I need this guy. So at uh, x equal 0 0.611 from table B4. Vessel functions. J one put that in there, solve for Q. And there's the amount of energy that's been transferred to the cylinder from the hot gases in the time inter interval from time zero to 1900 seconds. So what I've done there then, I've used all three of these equations in this example for this one problem. It doesn't matter if it's a plain wall, a long cylinder, R sphere, you do the same three things. You can find the temperature anywhere. You can find the temperature at the center line or the center, and you can find the amount of Q that's occurred between time equals zero and time T. Why does our book only give these three geometries? Because they're very popular geometries. They occur quite often. For instance, maybe you want to heat treat some kind of a, of a metal plate. And so you've got the metal plate hanging from hangers. Here's a big metal plate. You put this guy in a furnace. Hot gases on both sides. There's a picture right there. So this is used for heat treatment of plates. A long cylinder. Oh, a wire is a long cylinder. You can heat treat wire. A big spool of wire, hundreds of feet long. By how big diameter? I don't know, one inch, half an inch, quarter inch. Oh, that's a long cylinder, believe me. It's used for heat treating wires. How about spheres? Oh, ball bearings have to be hardened on the outside surface only. On the outside surface, hardened. How long should the ball bearing be in heat treatment just in order to, to make the outside hardened? Oh, that's here it is. Where's the time in there? We just did one with time, okay? So yeah, these are common geometries used in engineering for heat treatment, for instance, besides other, other reasons, of course but mainly a lot of it's on the heat treatment side. Okay, good stopping point. So we'll see you on Wednesday.